Hi, my name is Nimna Darwish. I'm 28-MET student. Uh, uh, me and my team members are going to explain to you our project. Uh, uh, the problem came, um, came up, uh, we came up with the problem uh, because in Egypt there occurred more than one major train accident resulting in terrible consequences. Thus, we, uh, we have uh, decided upon simulating a model that will help in so solving uh, the problem at hand. Uh, we came up with the idea of uh, implementing an uh, automated railway gate uh, instead of having the gate being uh, automated uh, controlled by uh, uh, controlled manually uh, we have used in our project uh, two inputs and two outputs uh, the first input was uh, was the proximity sensor and the other input is the line detector sensor and uh, the two outputs are the a buzzer and uh, the motor that uh, the the gate that's controlled by a servo motor uh, and now uh, i've helped uh, with the code uh, with salma who's going to explain now the code hi i'm salma um, i'm going to walk you through how our, how our code works uh, our code was very simple um, as menna mentioned we have two inputs but there's another third input which is the clock uh, our two inputs were um, the line detector and the proximity sensor uh, we had only two if conditions in our code. The first one was uh, concerning the proximity sensor because it was located before the train, um, before sorry the gate. And the other one uh, is the line detector as it was considered uh, located after the, the gate. The first one, oh, both, uh, both proximity sensors, the line detector and the proximity sensors, they're low active. So if their value is a zero, that means that they're detecting something. And if their value is a one, that means that they're not detect detecting something. Um, if our infrared, uh, infrared um, proximity value is equal to zero, the buzzer, we have another input which is the uh, output, is, which is the buzzer, is going to be equal to one and the buzzer will start, indicating that there's a train that's going to pass. And the move will be equal to one, which indicates, which will uh, let the gate flip and it will close, preventing any car to pass by. And then after that, the train will move and, when, and then when the line detector detect something and its value is equal to zero, the buzzer will be, uh, its value will be equal to zero and uh, it will stop and the move will be equal to zero and that means that the train has passed so it's safe for the cars to pass by and then the gate will open and that's basically it. And uh, now I'm going to leave you with my friends Aya and Tora and they're going to tell you how all the connections work. Hi, I'm Aya. Uh, my friend Tora and I will uh, explain how uh, the components work and how they uh, how the components are connected and how they function. Uh, first of all, we have two inputs, uh, the proximity sensor that's located before the train that indicates if um, a train is uh, approaching the gate and another line detector sensor that's uh, located after the gate that uh, indicates that the train has already passed by and uh, two outputs, the, buzz uh, the buzzer and the motor. Um, we also have another input which is the, the clock but actually it does not have any connection, it's just a signal sent from the OCR to the computer. Um, so, um, uh, the proximity sensor and the line detector and the motor, they all need 5 volts. That's why we needed a breadboard so that it's connected to the 5 volt pin in, uh, of the Altera and the ground of the Altera and, any, and anything that needs 5 volts is just connected to the breadboard in parallel. So, we have the uh, uh, proximity sensor and the line detector and the motor, they all are connected in parallel because they all need 5 volts as input so they can function. Uh, and now Tar uh, will explain how every sensor and the motor and the buzzer, how they all function. Hi, I'm Tar, and as we said before, each component has its three wires, uh, the, the ground, the voltage, and the signal, uh, except for the buzzer, which doesn't need a voltage to run. So the line detector sensor uh, is connected to the breadboard, which uh, takes the um, takes the voltage from that's connected to the Altera board 5 volt. Also the proximity sensor is connected to the, um, to the uh, breadboard and the motor. And they're connected directly to the, um, to the I.O. Um, ports in the Altera to take the signal which is already programmed in the board. So when the train passes by the proximity sensor, it detects uh, a signal which is active low. So it sends the signal zero through the signal wire to the board which is programmed to um, output a signal to the buzzer and the motor to close the, um, close the gate and output a uh, sound through the buzzer. And when it detects uh, an object nearby the, um, 
the line factor sensor, it sends a signal zero to the, uh, to, the to the signal wire um, because it's active low, and it sends a signal to the um, to the motor to open the gate, and it sends a signal zero to the buzzer to stop the sound. And now my friend Ahmed is gonna uh, sum it up and tell you how we. Uh, Hi, my name is Ahmed, and my part in the project uh, was helping in arranging the hardware. First of all, we got this railway with the chain and the car to simulate how this is going to work in the real life. Secondly, we got the proximity sensor, the line detector, and the servo motor to act as the gate. Uh, so basically, when the train passes by the proximity sensor, the gate closes and the buzzer uh, turns on to alert any cars on the street. Uh, that's passing by. So when the when the train passes by the gate and passes in front of the line detector, the gate simply opens and the bus the buzzer turns off. Uh, so basically, that's our project, and I'm gonna, going to turn it on to you to see it in action.